Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Foggy Light. This is a reference for my painting. It's a lighthouse up in Maine that I've painted a number of times, probably too many times, but I enjoy painting it and I thought it'd be a good subject for this tutorial. This is actually a portrait photo, but my composition is horizontal and rather than painting it with the colors that appear in the photograph, I'm just using it for reference basically for my sketch and then I'm going to paint it as a foggy lighthouse scene. This is my pencil sketch. I've simplified in some areas and I've added some things in other areas. The lighthouse has some lost edges and the rocks are simplified. I've made it a horizontal composition and I've added a horizon line where the sky and the sea come together. And I have that at about two thirds sky and a third land and sea. And you normally want to have that kind of a ratio. It could be a third sky and, and a two thirds land and, and uh, sea. Um, but you don't want to split it in the middle. So I've got that ratio of two thirds to one third and I've added some uh, bird elements in the sky. I know that's overdone also, but uh, it brings a little activity in my painting and my composition and it keeps the eye from running off the page. Before I begin painting, I'm going to go through the colors that I use for this painting and I'm going to run it at about half speed because I mix my paint pretty quickly. I'm starting with royal blue, which is a Holbein color. The pigment is PB60. It's also known under the name of endantherone blue, endantherine blue, and delf blue by other manufacturers, but it's PB60. This next color that I'm using is Halloween orange. This is an American Journey color. The, the pigment is PO62, and it's also known as permanent orange or Windsor orange or azo orange by other manufacturers. But the pigment is PO62. So I'm gonna put a mark of each on my uh, piece of paper that I have there in front of my palette. And the the uh, royal blue is, is a somewhat diluted mixture there because it, it can be very dark. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Halloween orange and I'm going to mix it with the royal blue to uh, take a little bit more towards the neutral side. And it doesn't take much. Uh, it starts to warm it up pretty quickly if I put too much in there. And I want this to be kind of a cool gray blue for a, for a foggy scene that I'm going to paint. So I'm going to cool that off just a little bit more, go back a little bit more, more towards the blue side. So I've taken that a little bit more towards the blue side and I'm going to put a wash on this piece of paper that I have. And this is the tone that I'm going to be using in the sky. It's kind of a, a blue gray tone. It's a neutral, it's a cool blue. Uh, leaning towards the neutral side. You can see as I add water uh, you could use this color to represent the tones and, and uh, some of the clouds in the sky in a foggy day. And over here now I'm adding some blue to the orange but I'm going to use a, a warmer tone also so I've got a mixture here with a little bit more orange. As I said, it doesn't take a lot of orange to swing the mixture leaning towards the warm side. So I'm going to put some of this down on this paper. Take a little bit of uh, a little bit more orange. I'm going to warm it up even more. I put that down. You can see it's a warm gray, really against a cool gray. And then take some water and let those two kind of mingle together on the paper. And that can give a, a nice effect for uh, the, the clouds in the sky. In this case, it's going to be this foggy atmosphere that I'm trying to create. So that's what the majority of this painting is going to be done with, with the warm and the cool neutrals. 
and I'll start with a big brush and apply uh, a big wash and, and block out some of the larger shapes in my painting when I do that. I'm also going to use the royal blue and uh, Halloween orange for my dark. So I'm taking a heavier concentration of pigment from the royal blue. And you can see how rich uh, of a color that is and how, how dark that can be. So that's a, a pretty pigment rich mixture from the palette. And now I'm going to take some Halloween orange into that mixture. And you can see how that takes that blue down and drives it more towards neutral. But that's a very dark dark and it's the same two paints uh, that I used in the, in the mixture above in the palette that's a lighter combination. But I'm going to be using the same two colors to make the uh, dark value marks that I'll make in this painting. I'm going to take a little bit of water and gradate that out just to a lighter value so you can kind of see the, the range you can get with this color. But I'll be, be making primarily some uh, dark marks similar to this. So that's the value range that I'll be using going from the white to the, to the light warm and cool grays that I have there and to this very dark valued blue. The other color I'm going to have just a little bit of in this painting is I have this quinacrid and coral, but you could use a, a rose or alizarin. Uh, and I'm mixing it with this warmed up neutral that I have and taking it down a little bit, a little more neutral than what it was. And I'm going to use that on my painting for the light in the lighthouse and just a little bit on the roof of the uh, the the building structure there that's there with the lighthouse. And now I'm ready to begin painting. I think it took me longer to explain what I was going to do than it's going to take for me to do the painting. This isn't intended to be a complex piece. It's intended to be uh, a simple exercise, getting practice on simplification creating lost and found edges, and creating a mood. I've started by using a one inch wash brush. This is a uh, silver black velvet brush, one of the brushes I like to use. And I have them uh, listed in the supplies on my uh, website. And you can see it does a nice job covering the area without a lot of little uh, tiny brush marks. It, it just gives this nice fluid wash and I'm not necessarily trying to make this a, a, uh, a smooth wash because it's, you know, it's a foggy day and you have this variation of tone going on in the clouds and in the sky. And here I'm bringing in this warm tone. That's the mixture of Halloween orange and royal blue leaning more towards the orange side, the warm side. And the, the blue is still has Halloween orange, but it's leaning more towards the blue side. When I describe my process, I always mention how I start with my larger shapes, larger brushes, and work down, and I build my values as I go. This is no different. You can see what I've done is map out a large shape here, and it's all pretty much in a, in a light middle value, but it's got warm and cool variation in it. But even though there's some color change going on, it's pretty much the same value. Sometimes I think people think because you've changed the color that you're, you've changed your value. That's not necessarily true unless you actually truly have gone lighter or dark in value. So I'm going to start to paint the this rocky edge here by just making some large brush strokes and um, the direction of the brush stroke and the type of brush mark I'm making is what starts to define the, the plane and the direction and here in this case some some grassy shapes but for the most part, I'm, I'm doing these the sides and describing the, uh, the volume of this rocky edge just by making a few brush strokes. 
And now as I zoom in, you can see how I've used both warm and cool colors, but both mixtures are the same pigments, just with different ratios. One leaning more towards the warm side, one leaning more towards the cool side. And now I'm starting to uh, add some dark value brush marks here and start to describe some of the what's going to be some of the dark valued areas in this composition on this lighthouse and this is still the same mixture royal blue and Halloween orange it's just the mixture that has a heavier concentration of pigment I'm just using this darker value to describe this uh, top portion of the lighthouse as it's coming out of the fog here. And you can see how I've broke up the shape a little bit by uh, just leaving gaps um, in between some of my brush marks. And as I come down here, the, I want to, I wanted to make that shape I just painted uh, have a little variation in it so I just hit it with my hand and by doing so I lift some of the paint and disturb it a little bit put a little texture in it um, it makes it so it's a little more interesting not just a flat sh uh, shape of a, with a flat wash on it And now I'm just putting the indication of these rails. And all this brushwork here I'm doing with the same brush. This is this uh, black and gold, Dynasty black and gold quill brush that I like to use. As I've mentioned before, it's a difficult brush to get your hands on sometimes, but uh, it does a nice job with some of this detail work. And you can see where I hit my hand again just to give some variation to that wash that I put down. Now I'm going to take that same uh, mixture of paint and I'm just giving some indication of some marks and some lines uh, on this building structure it, just to indicate some shadowed areas and, and just help give some dimension to this uh, building that's uh, part of the lighthouse. You'll notice as I paint this, uh, the indication of this window here, here again I touch hit it with my hand just to break that wash up. But you can see that there's separation in my brush marks. It's not just a solid outline of this window. I break it up in places and, and just try to make it more interesting than just if I just like paint a square or a rectangle all the way around it. You can see how it's broken up in spots and interrupted. Now I'm going to take uh, the same pigment for where I'm going to have an indication of a couple trees here. Now you can see I'm very uh, uh, suggestive when I'm painting the trees. I just, just kind of give the indication of that volume of that shape and uh, then I'm going to hit it with a spray bottle and soften that up a little bit because I, I don't want them to be real strong hard edged because they're again this is kind of a foggy day so um, soft edge helps uh, create that that, that foggy um, atmosphere and I'm taking the same value down through the rocky area just giving the indication of some hard edges and uh, a little bit more definition to the to the rocky edge there and just a reminder that so far I really I've only used two colors the Halloween orange and the royal blue they're just done, they're just used in different mixtures with different ratios of the orange and the blue and different ratios of the pigment and the water so you can really it's amazing what you can really do with just uh, two two uh, two colors of paint
And I'm going to hit those areas with a spray bottle and soften them up just a little bit. Now I'm taking a half inch flat brush and I'm taking a warmer mixture now that's leaning towards the orange side and I'm just working my way around the composition building in some of these warm tones because you're going to get that from the reflection of light that's going on even though it's foggy you still have light reflecting around and I try and make these marks so that they contour the surface that they're on. Here I'm using that same half inch flat brush with a warm tone and I'm just making some marks on this rocky ledge. Now for the first time I'm going to use a color other than the Halloween orange and the royal blue and that's this quinacridone coral that has a little bit of the uh, blue and orange mixture in it just to take it down a little bit and I put that there to give the indication of the light and now to carry that red tone just another location in the painting I'm going to take a mixture and hit the uh, the edge of the the top of the roof there as it shows up towards the front of the the building structure However, I've toned it down a little bit with a with a cooler mixture of the royal blue and Halloween orange. I'm going to take that cool mixture of the blue and orange and give the indication of uh, where the horizon is at by painting the tone of the sea. And I want that to fade out a little bit and get lost. So I hit it with a spray bottle. So I'm taking my mixture of Halloween orange and royal blue again. That's uh, very rich in pigment, not as much water. And I've made a very dark value tone and I'm applying that in a few areas in the composition. Just trying to put some dark valued highlights into the painting. This isn't because this is a foggy scene and a lot of edges are soft and lost. There's not a lot of hard edge, dark valued shapes in the composition. I'm putting some dark values up here in this lighthouse area where I kind of want to draw the viewer in and some on this uh, building structure. But just some very small marks here and there. It doesn't take much. Uh, this is very much a middle light middle value uh, painting and I'm going to actually put a little a little bit of that value down in the in the rocks and just touches of it again it doesn't take a lot just to say something but it helps build harmony with the rest of the, the painting by working that dark value in a number of places even though they're not big shapes or just very small marks, they they say a lot. Now I'm going to take a liner brush, a small liner brush with some of this darker value on it, and I'm going to give the indication of these birds which I've penciled in. You can see I vary the, the length of the wing and I change the angle and and spacing to try and keep it interesting and put it at angles that help keep the eye into the composition and it brings a little activity to the to the painting so I put the dark value on and I hit it with a tissue to lighten it up and break it up a little bit I'm going to take that same brush and value and just give just a few very slight marks in the tree I do it at different spots and the links vary uh, the length of the stroke varies so they're not the same and I put a little bit in this other um, uh, fir tree that I, that's there I call everything a pine tree but some are fir, some are evergreen, some are pine trees I want to strengthen that indication of the horizon a little bit more 
So I put a little bit more uh, value there and grade ate it down with some water. So that makes that stand out a little bit more and creates a little bit more contrast between it and the, the edge there. And I just put a little mark just again to give an indication of edge, but it's not much of a mark, but it does a lot. And the final mark is I want to put that little rod that's on the top. Just give an indication of that being up there. Not too strong, but um, it's a feature that's part of that lighthouse. I've been working on an 8 by 10 inch piece of watercolor paper. And it works well with an 11 by 14 inch mat. And I like to use white mats. It, keeps, it gives a nice clean look and presents the artwork. So this is a simple painting, simple composition. If you do decide to try and give this a try, give this a go, um, don't overthink it. Just have fun with it, experiment. Again, my goal was to have some lost and found edges, um, keep it simple, and have uh, this foggy atmosphere. So, and I, and I think that's been achieved. As always, if you have questions about my materials, you can go to the studio page of my website, where I have all my materials listed. If you have specific questions, you can email me at contactarthurwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.